The Divided Self by R.D. Lang Narrated by Anonymous Preface This is the first of a series of studies in existential psychology and psychiatry in which it is proposed to present original contributions to this field by a number of authors. The present book is a study of schizoid and schizophrenic persons. Its basic purpose is to make madness and the process of going mad comprehensible. Readers will judge variously the success or failure of this aim. I would ask, however, that the book should not be judged in terms of what it does not attempt to do. Specifically, no attempt is made to present a comprehensive theory of schizophrenia. No attempt is made to explore constitutional and organic aspects. No attempt is made to describe my own relationship with these patients or my own method of therapy. A further purpose is to give in plain English an account, in existential terms, of some forms of madness. In this, I believe it to be the first of its kind. Most readers will find a few terms strangely used in the first few chapters. I have, however, given careful thought to any such usage, and have not employed it unless I felt compelled by the sense to do so. Here again, a brief statement about what I have not tried to do may avoid misunderstanding. The reader versed in existential and phenomenological literature will quickly see that this study is not a direct application of any established existential philosophy. There are important points of divergence from the work of Kierkegaard, Jaspers, Heidegger, Sarch, Binswanger, and Tillich, for instance. To discuss points of convergence and divergence in any detail would have taken me away from the immediate task. Such a discussion belongs to another place. It is to the existential tradition, however, that I acknowledge my main intellectual indebtedness. I wish to express here my gratitude to the patients and their parents about whom I have written in the following pages. All of those to whom I have referred at any length have given their willing consent to this publication. Names, places, and all identifying details have been changed, but the reader can be assured that he is not reading fiction. I wish to register my gratitude to Dr. Angus McNiven and Professor T. Ferguson Roger for the facilities they provided for the clinical basis for this study and the encouragement they gave me. The clinical work upon which these studies are based was all completed before 1956, that is, before I became an assistant physician at the Tavistock Clinic, when Dr. J.D. Sutherland generously made secretarial help available in the preparation of the final manuscript. Since the book was completed in 1957, it has been read by many people, and I have received such encouragement and helpful criticism from more individuals than I can conveniently list. I would like to thank particularly Dr. Carl Abenheimer, Miss Marion Milner, Professor T. Ferguson Roger, Professor J. Romano, Dr. Charles Rycroft, Dr. J. Shorstein, Dr. J. D. Sutherland, and Dr. D. W. Winnicott for their constructive reactions to the MS. R. D. Lang.